Okay, uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Let's start with the today's session. And uh, in the today's session, we are going to start with the ratios that is interpretation of financial in statement. And that is one of the most important standard right now. It's one of the most important standard with respect to your paper point of view. Uh, as if we just observe and if we just can, uh, if we just have a, uh, uh, I would say that uh, uh, if you just look at the past papers analysis, so we can see that uh, ratios or the interpretation of financial statement is tested frequently by the examiner. And uh, the weightage of this particular standard, I would say uh, the weightage of this particular standard is approximately around uh, 15 to 20 marks, 15 to 20 marks. So examiner is focusing more on this particular area. And uh, for the last three to four attempts, I would say uh, the examiner is uh, uh, giving a very good question on that particular topic. One reason that I could understand that I could uh, uh, get it, that is uh, why the examiner is focusing more on that particular topic <laughs> just because of it, uh, because the advanced paper of F7 is SBR or any professional paper or any professional paper. In those professional papers like SBR, SBL, and any other optional papers, uh, examiner is focusing more on the drafting side. These are the papers in which you need to draft, you need to type, you need to give explanation, you need to give reasoning. So for that purpose, uh, examiner is focusing more on the ratio side so that the students could practice for their drafting skills and they could enhance their drafting skills. That's why in every attempt, in every attempt, examiner is giving this question and is testing uh, and the testing amount or the marks is for 15 to 20 marks so that is a very important standard or we can say that a very important area with respect to the financial reporting paper okay now uh, let's start with this course that is interpretation of financial statement uh, i'll be giving you some tips and techniques no doubt uh, this is one of the most detailed topic and we have to practice a lot for this one uh, but in a very short period of time we can't go for the long approach we have to be uh, very smart we have to play very smart and we have to cover this topic when a low or in a very less period of time uh, but we have to practice it like uh, we can score very good marks in that particular question so our target would be that out of 20 or out of 15 uh, if there's a 20 marks question we could easily uh, get 12 marks at least so we'll try to uh, have a very balanced approach uh, as we don't have a lot of time so we can't spend a lot of time on that particular topic but in a very low period of time in a very lesser period of time we will try to cover the maximum out of it okay uh, let's start with the ratios that is the interpretation of financial statements uh, the ratios um, in your course can be divided into three categories into three categories that is the performance ratio that is the performance ratio, position ratio, and the investor's ratio. Uh, if we just talk about the performance ratio, in that particular performance ratio, basically the performance is shown by the profit and loss account. Always remember, statement of profit and loss account will give you the performance. The statement of financial position will give you the position. So it means in that particular performance ratio, we will be discussing more on the PL items. We'll be discussing more on the PL items. And in the position ratios, as the name itself emphasizes, so we'll be focusing more on the balance sheet items. So in these particular ratios, the performance will be focusing more on the PL side. And in the position ratios, we'll be focusing more on the balance sheet side. We will when once we will see once we, once we will see the uh, formulas of these particular ratios, you will get to know that. Uh, in performance ratio majority of the line items majority of the line items related to the profit and loss account and in position ratios majority of the line items will relate to the balance sheet side the other part is the investor ratios if i just talk about the examiner approach the examiner is testing more for the performance and the position so far in the last five to seven attempts examiner have never tested for the investors ratio Although it's a part of your course, we will practice for this one. We will have formula for this one. And we will try to learn some understanding from these particular ratios. But the hot cake area, or we can see that the most important ratios are, that is the performance and the positions. And all of these ratios are tested frequently in your exams. Sometimes the examiner says that, uh, comment on the position and performance. It means it says that position and performance. You need to 
uh, give comments on the position and the performance so now it's up to you that whether you that whether you comment on all of these ratios or you comment few of them so it's up to you so at times examiner says that comment on the performance and the position now it's up to you uh, to which ratios do you select and on which ratios you comment but sometime examiner highlight many of the time most of the time examiner highlights the ratios in which you have to comment like gross profit margin net profit margin quick ratio current ratio and account receivable ratios so it means uh, majority of the times examiner would give you the ratios on which you have to give the comments now uh, let's start with the ratios section uh, but let me give you first a trick how to solve the ratios and how to attempt the ratios remember in your paper examiner will be testing you for the ratios for let's say 20 marks or 16 marks normally for the 20 marks out of 20 marks there would be a six marks for your calculation which means uh, from 20 marks uh, you'll be having six marks for your calculation i think these six marks are very straightforward and a very easy one once you will move towards the section c area i would recommend you that you first of all go for that calculation i have written the formulas over here with all the ratios you have to learn the ratios by heart you have to learn the formulas by heart so that you can secure or score a very easy marks that is the six marks remaining 14 marks remaining 14 marks related to the interpretations relating to the interpretations that is you need to give analysis these 14 marks are for the interpretations now these are a little bit a challenging one reason being uh, at times when we are teaching uh, uh, to the students here in pakistan so there is a very general problem that the students normally face that they do not speak english they don't have a habit to speak english so it means they what they do what they, they face they face a lot of problem in uh, commenting and drafting the questions or the answers at times i have observed this uh, uh, deficiency in many of the students around the world so i just i what i have done that i have made some pinpoints i have made some pinpoints in all the ratios so that you can answer it very easily I'll give you some tricks and techniques so from which you can answer the ratios very easily. And 14 marks are for the interpretations. And you just think that uh, examiner will give you approximately six ratios on which you have to make comments, on which you have to give interpretation or the analysis. And if I just divide the marks, that is for the six ratios, say I would say that uh, it's around uh 2.5 marks or two marks for each ratios if there's a question for the 14 marks and there are six ratios that the examiner would ask you to comment on that on those ratios so it would make around it would it would make around two to 2.5 marks per ratio two to 2.5 marks per ratio so it means it means uh, if we are having or if we are getting 2.5 marks per ratio, so we are going to comment according to the marks. For example, if you have written a lot of things, a lot of comments, and you have written marvelously, so will you be getting uh, will you be getting three out of 2.5? No. No, will not be getting. So we have to make the efforts in a reasonable way so that we can secure maximum marks out of it. Are you getting a point? Yes. And how to interpret? I'll show you some tic tacs. I will show you some techniques that how you can comment on the ratios. Now, first thing, uh, we are going to start with the uh, that is the performance ratios. And performance ratios, there are four ratios that is GP margin, net profit margin, asset turnover, and and return on capital employed and you gross profit margin ratio the formula of gross profit margin ratio is gross profit divided by net sales or the revenue multiplied by 100 now two things that you need to recall that you need to remember while commenting on the ratios first thing is that gross profit margin ratio answer will be in terms of percentage you will get the answer in terms of percentage one thing that you need to remember and the most important thing is that is the higher is favorable okay now what does it mean it means the more the ratio would be the more the ratio would be it means it's greater for the it's good for the organization it means if i would say 
that the uh, gross profit margin of a company A is 20% and the gross profit margin of a company B is 20%. Which company uh, would have a good uh, credibility in the market? The first one. The second one, 30%. The second one, yes. It means the gross profit margin ratio is higher, is favorable. The more you have a gross profit margin, the more you will be having a very good rating in the market, which means it's a positive sign for the organization. Higher is favorable means higher is higher shows the positive sign for the organization. Now, uh, let me give you an analysis for, the, uh, for this one that what's going on. First of all, we have net sales, uh, let's say 100 and we did a cost of goods sold uh, let's say 20. so we just arrive at the gross profit that is 80. now yes. we're calculating the gross profit margin ratio so how is going to calculate that is gross profit divided by 100 multiplied by 100 so this would give you the 80 percent is it yes now what it shows whenever you are going to comments whenever you are going to if you are very good in the commenting side and you know that i know what how to grip and what to write and what not to write and you are having a very good expertise uh, in commenting so it's a very good sign but if you don't have if you think that i shiver and i just got panic whenever i uh, start to comment and whenever i start to make interpretations i couldn't get the points in my mind majority of the students faces this problem they don't get the points in their mind while they're commenting while they're interpreting they are just blank although they have practiced a lot but they are blank at the time when they are presenting the answers reason being that is very difficult to retain the answers so i'm giving you some tricks and techniques whenever you are going to comment first point that you can comment is first point that you comment uh, is that uh, the definition of ratio remember i told you that for each ratio you have 2.5 marks for every ratio you have 2.5 marks to comment which means now what you can do that first of all you will define the ratio because you have to put the material what you have done in your previous attempts that you were just having a calculation of the ratio so you were just focusing on those six marks but my point is why to only secure six marks why not to go for that one why not to target these 14 marks out of 14 if you'll be scoring eight nine ten marks so it's a very good achievement it would be a very good achievement it means eight plus six that would be 14 marks out of 20 if you are scoring 14 marks 13 marks or 12 marks it's a very good sign are you getting my point so yes. and for those 2.5 marks what we'll be doing first of all you will write the definition you will write the definition what does it mean it means every ratio has its own interpretation like if i will just tell you that what uh, this gross profit margin states that what this gross profit margin states that gross profit margin states that that how many um, uh, what amount of what amount of profit what amount of profit do you retain from a one dollar sales from a one dollar sales for example if the company is selling hundred dollar if the company is selling goods for hundred dollar it is retaining a profit of eighty dollar which means the retention of profit is eighty percent if i'm selling a one dollar sales if i'm selling a one dollar sales if i'm having a selling a uh, sales of one dollar it means out of which 80 cents would be my profit remaining 20 cents would be my cost so definition that is the meaning of that ratio meaning of that ratio so what is the meaning of the gross profit margin ratio that what amount of gross profit is being rate yeah, or we can say that we can say that that what amount of what amount of or what percentage of profit retained by the company retained by the company retained by the company from one dollar sales from one dollar sales it means if i am selling one dollar and then i'm retaining a profit of 0 0.8 it means the profit retention is 0 0.8 that is 80 percent which shows that company is a good position reason being the higher the profit would be the higher the performance of the company so it means first of all you need to write down the definition second thing that is you need to write down that you can write down in that particular uh, comments is the higher is favorable or lower is favorable for every ratio you can write it down that whether the higher is favorable or lower is favorable if you are commenting on that ratio you must know that which ratio answer would be higher 
is favorable or for which ratios the lower answer is favorable so you need to write down the higher is favorable and now in the third case on the third scenario what you have to do now you have to give analysis or you need to pass on the comments based on the scenario examiner will always give you certain scenario and what you will be doing and what you will be doing that on the basis of that scenario you will be commenting you will be giving your explanation or the reasoning so what you have to do you have to link the scenario with that particular ratio you have to link that scenario with the particular ratio now remember always remember whenever you will be commenting examiner will be giving you the parallel or the comparative values for example either the examiner will be giving you the uh, let's say two year data let's say 20x1 or 20x2 or the examiner will be giving you two companies data that is company a or company b or the examiner will give you the company a data with the industry averages so the examiner would be testing you with that particular areas for example a comparison from year one to year two a comparison from one company to another and the comparison of a company a with the industry averages so this would be the situation in either of the case there would be two there would be two resultant if you are comparing the ratio from the last year for example in 2001 your gross profit margin was 20 percent and now it's 25 percent let's say it's 25 percent now here the ratio is increasing or decreasing here the increasing. gross profit increasing now let's take another example for company a there was a gross profit margin of 15 percent and for the company b the gross profit margin is 12 percent is 12 percent and if you are commenting on the company's A's results, so what would you say whether the company's A's performance is increasing or decreasing or is comparatively uh, as compared to the company B? Increasing. Increasing. And if you are commenting with on behalf of the company B, what would you say whether the performance of the company is increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. Now, what comes to the point? What comes to the highlight? What, what is the conclusion for this one? whenever you will be focusing on the ratios whether the resultant would be well, for any ratios for any ratios whether the resultant would be increasing or decreasing am i right yes there is no third option whenever either the performance will be increasing or the performance will be decreasing there is no third option it is what you have to do you just need to memorize some good points related to the increasing those particular ratios you need to memorize that what could be a very good points for the decreasing or what could be a valid reasons for the decreasing in the ratios remember examiner report states that if the student is writing that for example gross profit margin is increasing and it is good for the organization and it is increasing very increasing it is very impressive and like uh, it's it's marvelous the examiner says that we don't need such type of such type of comments if you're saying that the gross profit margin is increasing, examiner states that we know that we can see it. We are not blind person. We can see that gross profit margin is increasing. All what you have to do, if this is increasing, you need to give a valid and a very good reason for those. Are you getting a point? So yes. what you have to do, you have to memorize, you have to retain some good points or the some good reasons for the increase in that particular ratio or the decrease in that particular ratio. Is it okay. clear to you? Yeah. Now, let's uh, let's start with the gross profit margin ratios. Gross profit GP margin ratio or the gross profit margin ratio states that how much amount of sales being generated, how much amount of profit is being generated or earned from the one dollar sales. Now, if you just look at that calculation which I've done, uh, can you please uh, can you uh, just let me know? In order to arrive at the gross profit, there are only two line items that helped us out and what are those revenue and cost of sales it means if you are going to comment on that gross profit margin you have just two points you have just two points to comments and it means if you want to comment the increase or either on the increase side or if the ratios are decreasing all what you can do you can play with these two line items let me give you an understanding for this one in this session i'll be giving you i'll be giving you different ideas i'll be opening your mind this is a mind opener session now if you want to comment on the gross profit margin you know you you, you know that if the gross profit margin is increasing let's say your gross profit percentage is increasing as compared to the last year 
now you have to give the comments what could be the possible op op what could be a possible option for this one there are two possible options number one that is the net sales and the second one is the cost of goods sold cost of sales yes cost of sales if the gross profit margin is increasing what you can comment number one number one you can say that it is a, it is possible that company might have increased the sales revenue or the company might have increased the selling price of the product because of which the sales has been increased and if the sales has been increased which means the profitability of the company has also increased number 1 because if you are increasing if your gross profit margin is increasing if your gross profit margin is increasing which means there are two particular options whether there will be an impact on the net sales or there will be an impact on the cost of goods sold now first thing that you can see the first thing that you can uh, comment that is if the gross profit margin is increasing which means company is having a higher sales and why could it could be a higher sales there is a possibility the company has launched a new product okay launched a new product because of which the company is having a higher sales revenue or the company has increased the selling price the company has increased the selling price because of which because of which the net sales has been increased and because of which the gross profit margin is also increased now one more thing one more thing that you can comment that is the on the cost of goods sold side in a cost of goods sold we have three line items like opening net purchases and ding so it means there is a possibility that during the course of this year the company has maintained or company has retained or company has lowered their cost of sales always remember if you are having a cost of sales we also have we also have the net purchases in that particular cost of sales it means there is a possibility that it means there is a possibility that the net purchases amounts is lower that company has purchased a raw material at the cheaper rate at the cheaper rate or oh, there is a possibility if the purchases amount is being lower the reason could be that the company has availed the bulk discounts okay it means if the company has availed the bulk discounts so the amount of the purchases is being lower or the reduced and while uh, if the amount is being reduced which means the cost of sales would also decrease and if the cost of sales would decrease there will be increase in the gross profit now let's see i have written down some comments over here i have written down some comments over here that gross profit margin may increase or decrease because change in the selling price due to the increased competition that is a very good point you can use in your analysis that if the gross profit margin is increasing or decreasing there could be a reason for the increased competition in the market one more very important point that you can use that the gross profit margin may change because of the sales mix what is sales mix sales mix is basically a technical term it could be an introduction of it could be an introduction of new it could be an introduction of or launching of new product or sales mix could either be a discontinuation of old product for example in a scenario in exams if the examiner is giving you that company has uh, increased the sales revenue and company is planning or company has launched a new product so you can use the word uh, or you can use that term that the sales mix that because of the sales mix remember these terminologies and these uh, jargons are very important for your analysis this will give a very good impression to the examiner the third point is the gross profit margin may decrease now we are talking about the decrease because of the new product promotions or the launching of new products yes for example if the gross profit margin is decreasing from year 1 to year 2 for example earlier it was 20% now the gross profit margin is 15% what could be an option for this one what could be a reason for this one what could be a reason for this one that the company's gross profit margin is decreasing because new product promotions or launching of a new product that you have launched a new product so far that new product is not being successful and it's in a promotional stage so there is a possibility that your gross profit margin would reduce are you getting a point 
Yes. Okay. One more thing. Possible ways to increase the gross profit margin. Possible ways to increase the gross profit margin. That is number one. That you increase the sales price. That you increase the sales price. You increase the sales price. Once you will increase the sales price. Once you will increase the sales price. It means it means your gross profit margin will increase. Or the other thing is that you reduce or you control the cost of production. That you reduce or control the cost of production. For example, if you are having a material, labor, and overheads to produce the goods, definitely the higher the material or the labor would be, the higher will be the cost of sales. So what you have to do that you need to you need to control your cost of production. One more thing that I want to give you an understanding for this one. Remember, always remember, whenever you are commenting on the ratios, first look at the formula. The formula itself will give you an idea that what to comment and what not to comment. For example, the formula for the gross profit margin is GP divided by sales. Always remember, if there is an increase in numerator, if there is an increase in numerator, there will be an increase in ratio. And if there is an increase in denominator. Sometimes, if you are trapped and you are not, uh, and you don't know that what to comment on that particular issue, so just see whether the remunerator is increasing or decreasing. If there is an increase in denominator, there will be a decrease in ratio. ratio. There will be a decrease in ratio. Ratio. Now, this applies what, only for the gross profit margin. No, this applies for all the ratios throughout. We will be studying. Okay. It's a technique. It's a trick. If you are confused regarding the ratio that what to comment and what not to comment, so you just bring that equation to your mind that if the numerator is increasing, it means the ratio would also increase. Or examiners sometimes ask you that comment how to improve the ratio. How to improve the ratio. Yes. So, there are, so what you can do, what you can do, you just need to look at the formula that for which ratio the examiner is asking. For example, examiner is asking that you need to increase the gross profit margin, and you just need to comment that how we can improve the gross profit margin. So what you have to do, you have to increase the numerator. You have to increase the numerator. Numerator, or in order to increase the ratio, you can decrease the denominator. Am I right? Yes. If you will decrease the denominator, automatically the uh, ratio would increase. So now let's try to evaluate this one. If I want to increase the gross profit margin, what I have to do that is to increase the remunerator. That is to increase the gross profit margin. Now let's think about that. That how we can increase the gross profit margin. Uh, yes, the gross profit margin can be increased either by increasing the sales revenue or by reducing the. Because of which one? Are you getting my point? Yes. And so far, the comments and the analysis which we have seen that the same points were discussed over here. That either you increase the sales revenue, either you increase the sales revenue, or you may decrease the cost of sales, and thereby you will be able, and thereby you will be able to increase the gross profit margin ratio. Are you getting a point? Yes. Okay. Now, another ratio that is the net profit margin ratio. Net what is net profit? Net profit margin ratio is also known as operating profit margin. So the profit, so the formula is net income. Net income means that is the profit before interest and tax. That is the profit before interest and tax divided by sales. Divided by sales. So net profit margin ratio is PBIT, profit before interest and tax, or sometimes operating profit is being considered. So net profit or profit before interest and tax divided by net sales revenue. Net sales revenue, and two important point is that is the answer of this ratio would again be in our percentage sign, and the second thing is that is higher is favorable. Am I right? Yes. Higher is favorable. If the net profit margin is higher, then the if the net profit margin is higher, it means the profitability of the company is higher, which shows the positive impact on the ratio or on the company. 
Now, what comments we can do? Remember, uh, while we were calculating the gross profit, while we were calculating the gross profit, so what we did, uh, we just took net sales, we deducted the cost of sales, and then we arrived at the gross profit. Is it? Yes. After the gross profit, what we are doing, uh, we need operating expenses like distribution costs, admin expenses. And we add up with the other income, is it? Yes. Then we arrive at the profit before interest and tax. So far, the formula which we are using, it has profit before interest and tax divided by net sales revenue. Now, first thing is, first thing is that what, that is the definition. What this ratio interprets that after that, what amount or what percentage of profit is being retained by the company what percentage of profit is being retained by the company from one dollar sales after deducting its all expenses am i right mm -hmm. if you just see that after the gross profit what we have done we have deducted the all expenses and other income and then we are arriving at the profit which means which we and remember in that particular income statement the major part or the major uh, head would comprise of the operating expense it has many expenses like distribution costs like admin costs like advertisement costs uh, like transportation salaries and wages so it means there's a very big component of the operating expenses so if we are commenting on the net profit margin ratio first of all we need to give a definition that what net profit margin ratio indicates it indicates that it indicates that how much percentage of profit how much percentage of profit which profit that is the operating profit how much percentage of operating profit is retained by the company retained by the company retained by the company from one dollar sales from one dollar sales for example if you're selling uh, if you're selling a goods of hundred dollar now we are going to evaluate in that particular situation that how much amount of profit is being retained by the company if you are if you are earning if your profitability is 100 million and you are having a sales and you are having a sales of let's say 200 million so what we'll be getting we'll be getting or we'll be calculating that how much amount of profit is retained by the per company from a one dollar sales and remember after deducting its expenses now okay. let's move on to the second point that you need to comment that is if the higher is favorable or lower is favorable so which is higher is favorable or lower is higher favorable. higher is favorable the more you the more you have an operating profit margin it means more it shows the very good performance of the company it shows the very good performance of the company now for example if in the if in the exams uh, if, if 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 in your exams Examiner is giving you a net profit margin of 20% and it says that in the next year or in the current year, now the net profit margin is 12%. It means the ratio is increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. If it is decreasing, we can't say that the that particular ratio is decreasing and it's very good or it's very bad for the organization. Organizations should work very hard and they need to work day in and day out. This is not the childish. Uh, yes, you, you can't comment like a childish. You can't comment like a childish way. So what you have to do, you have to give a very reasonable, very rational understanding. Examiner points out that problem in, in their examiner report. It, an examiner frequently says that, that we received very irrational comments from the students. They were commenting like the company is going very good and company's performance is going outstanding and amazing. So they are not expecting such kind of comments from the professional students. What you have to do, you need to give very good reasoning. Now, you just see that from gross profit till the net profit, there is only one line item expenses. that is expenses. It means whenever you are commenting on the net profit margin or the operating profit margin, all what you have to do, you need to target the expense area. There are multiple, there are multiple expenses that you can target. The first one is the advertisement. Oh. For example, you can say that 
yes the net profit margin of a company is reduced by 8% must use numerical terms you should use numerical terms in your comments this creates a very good impact on the examiner so now you see that you can say that yes net profit margin is decreasing but what i said no the net profit margin is decreasing by 8% now there should be some reason for this one now you will say you will continue a sentence reason for the decrease in that particular net profit margin could be an advertisement expense there is a possibility that company might have introduced a new product okay and in order to penetrate the market in order to penetrate the market company has incurred a huge amount on the advertisement expense are you getting a point yes so you are just giving a very rational comment on that particular situation another expense the very important expense depreciation you can also comment on that point as well for example you can say that the company uh, in that advertisement what i said company has introduced a new product and in order to make successful the new product the company has incurred a huge advertisement expense another reason could be another reason could be for example company has purchased more non current asset am i right yes. company has purchased more non current asset or we can use one more thing that company has shifted towards a revaluation model and you know that once you are moved towards the revaluation model higher depreciation is recorded am i right yes one more point that you comment that is the distribution cost transportation cost there is a possibility that company might have incurred or company might have uh, 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 yes expanded their operations and now they are delivering the goods and they have offered a new service that is the transportation and the, because of which the higher transportation expense is charged are you getting a point yes one more thing from the expense side you can comment on that is the bad debt expense you can comment in this one that for example for example companies management is unable to recover the receivable from their customers so there is a provision being made in the particular accounting period and company has recorded a bad debt expense and for any reason if the expenses are increasing if the expenses are increasing if the expenses are increasing obviously the profit would decrease yes profit would decrease and if the profit would decrease let's evaluate the formula what is the formula for the profit margin that is pbit divided by sales yes. what i told you that increase in numerator increase in numerator if the numerator is increasing if the numerator is increasing so the there ratio. will be a ratio will also increase but god forbid if the numerator is decreasing if the numerator is decreasing obviously the ratio would would also be decrease now what comes to the mind that if you are recording the expenses and there are higher expenses higher expenses means there will be a reduce in the profit am i right yes and if the profit is reduced which means the numerator is reduced ratio will, yes yes and ratio then the ratio will, will also reduce so what you are doing you giving the analysis on the depreciation that why your net profit margin is reducing you can state that these multiple comments they can state or you can have some multiple comments on this one are you getting a point yes if you could just read out the points which i have already evaluated on which i have uh, mentioned over here please read out these points mm -hmm. Okay. Are these points clear to you? Yes.
remember let me give uh, let me recall you that we are going to fetch maximum marks we are trying to fetch the maximum marks and these are the tactics what you have to do you need to remember all of these uh, you need to remember all of these uh, points in your mind one more thing one more important point uh, that is written over here which we have not discussed that major reduction in the net profit margin may be because of the unusual expenditures like penalties and redundancies are you getting it yes that is a very good point that you can mention these are the technical terms that is the penalties redundancies so you need to focus penalties here yeah, how is it penalties for example in is 37 we have seen that uh, if the company have, is having a court case a okay. litigation yes so in order in or in compliance with the ias 37 you can use the term is 37 as well okay are you getting a point so if being an examiner if you see that, that the customer or the uh, or the uh, for example the student or the candidate has used these technical terms and the particular candidate uh, candidate has referred uh, to the different scenarios so this will create a very good impact on the examiner are you getting a point remember yes. that ratio is one of the area in which the judgments will be used examiner will be using his judgment okay so penalties and redundancies could be a reason because of which there is a higher expenses and if the expenses would increase definitely the profit would reduce and if the profit is decreasing it means the numerator is decreasing and again the ratio is decreasing okay now what actions we can take that is first of all reduce the admin cost mm -hmm. distribution cost operational cost where it is possible we need to to make a profit net profit yes. margin better we need to reduce expense yes exactly that is the same and the simple answer that is a simple answer. If, for example, you have you, you are given with the condition we are given with the uh, scenario in which uh, the net profit margin as compared to the last year is decreased. Now you cannot comment on this one that uh, it's decreasing, it's decreasing, and it's very bad for the organization. The organization is doing very bad. Uh, they should be kicked out. The director should be fired. No, this is not the reasonable comments. You have to give a very rational comment. You need to give a solution for this one. Yes, the gross net profit margin is decreasing. Now, what's next? You need to reduce or you need to control your expenses. But in exams, you will be explaining the each of the expenses. Are you getting a point? Like yes. you can give comments on the advertisement. You can have some points for the depreciation. Remember again, for each ratio, what is the maximum marks? 2.5. Yes. And don't you think that after writing these points like uh, definition and then higher uh, and then you are commenting. So it means if you are, uh, we just discussed many points, you, if, you will be, if you will be presenting only two or three points, that would be more than enough. Don't you think? Yes. For 2.5 marks, it's sufficient material. Now, uh, another issue that is the asset turnover ratio. Asset turnover, what? asset turnover ratio indicates let me first give you first of all uh, the result of this ratio will be in times it's still performance or we have come to the position sorry it's in performance ratios or perf uh, no 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 it's position. a performance ratio we are, we are we are moving on the performance ratios once oh. we will uh, once we will be uh, moving on the position i will let you know okay. it's a performance ratio we just need there are four main performance ratios GP margin, net profit margin, asset turnover, and the capital ratio. That is return on capital ratio to which we call ROS. Okay. So, uh, asset turnover ratio. Asset turnover ratio is always in times. Asset turnover is always in times. Times. The resultant would be in times, so we'll not be multiplying with the 100. Now, what it indicates first thing is that is definition or we can say that the meaning what is the definition or meaning the definition of the asset turnover ratio what it shows what it shows that on an average on an average how many times how many times company may by using their total financing by using their total financing 
Now, what does it mean? If you just look at the formula, that is the sales divided by capital employed. First thing that you need to remember, what do we mean by capital employed? Capital employed means that is the total amount you have invested, total amount you have uh, you have employed, total capital you have deployed. Like uh, there are two major sources of financing. That is the long term financing. That is the long term liability plus that is the shareholder equity. Always remember, in any company, there are two major modes of financing. Number one is the long-term debt, and the second one is the shareholders' equity. Now, capital employed is the sum of it's a sum of long-term debt plus shareholder equity. Are you getting a point? Yes. So, if you are calculating the asset turnover ratio, what you have to do, you need to calculate the capital employed. How are you going to calculate? That is a long-term debt plus shareholder equity is equal to the capital employed. Okay. Now, what it indicates that from by implementing or by by using the total financing. Total financing means debt plus equity. Debt plus equity. By Jeanette, using the yes. Equity, you you can calculate by share capital plus reserves also. Exactly. Equity is basically the sum of ordinary share capital ordinary share capital plus all reserves all reserves like retain earning share premium revaluation surplus all reserves would be equals to the equity that is the shareholders equity we can say that okay are you getting a point yes okay okay go Okay, now, so uh, what that ratio indicates that how many times company made sales during their total total financing. It means if you have utilized the total financing on an average in a year, in a year, on an average in a year, how many times you have sold the product? How many times you have sold the product? For example, for example, the sales, there's a sales of a company, let's say uh, it's a $1 million sales. Okay. And the total capital which you have employed, the total capital which you have employed, it's let's say, uh, it's let's say fifty thousand. It's let's say fifty thousand. Can you please divide one million divided by fifty thousand? Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. It means. Uh, it means company uh, company sold company sold twenty thousand times in a year. And if you just make it uh, more simple, that one million dollars the sales, and let's say the five lakh one million five lakh is the capital employed. So this would make around two times, is it? Yes. Now, what does it interprets that? It interprets that that in, on an average in a year you sold your product you sold your product two times in a year it means in a 365 days in a 365 days in a year you just sold your product two times only two times and if you just look at that company what they did they sold the product 20000 times in a year now you just let me know whether the higher is favorable or the lower is favorable higher is favorable yes so first point that you need to put it on that higher is favorable you need to remember this one i just let i'm just keep i just keep on keep on repeating one of whenever you are going to comment first of all let's just give the definition or the explanation that what it ratio interprets second thing is that you need to put it on that whether the particular ratio uh, higher is favorable or the lower is favorable and on the third phase you will be linking your scenario now the point comes to that that if the company is having a 20000 times and if the company is having a two times what comes to your mind whether the company a is in a good performance or the company b a their debt is lower i think the debt is lower or you are saying that uh, you can't evaluate that how the debt is lower. That denominator in which we have that is the capital employed. That capital employed, that capital employed includes the shares 
that is the ordinary shares or the shareholder equity plus long term debt so in that particular situation you cannot identify whether the debt is lower or the higher okay. are you getting a point yes. now let me give you some analysis let me give you some extra points for this one always remember if whenever 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 company wants to increase the profit whenever the company wants to increase the profit they have two options number one either to increase the net profit margin or to increase the asset turnover now listen to me very carefully from here i'll be connecting i'll be connecting the return on capital employed if the company wants to increase the net, uh, profitability of the company they either have to increase the net profit margin or they have to increase the asset turnover how net profit margin states that for a $1 sales for a $1 sales what amount of profit percentage you have retained for example for example uh, if the net profit is let's say 1000 if the net profit is let's say 1000 and we made a sales of let's say uh, 800 so it means 1000 divided by 800 1000 divided by 800 1000 divided by 800 multiply by 100 that is 125 percent it means you are earning a profit of 125 percent now remember company is earning a profit of 125 percent if the net profit margin is higher company is retaining a very huge amount of profit so remember the asset turnover would be lower asset if turnover net, asset turnover if, would be lower why because if you will increase the profitability if you increase the profit margin of a product if you will increase the profit margin of a product obviously the turnover or the sales would reduce let me give you a very simple example for this one if i would increase the price of this course for example if i would say that i'll be teaching that f7 course uh, in a 500 dollars 500 i'll be charging 500 us dollars so it means if earlier i would be teaching to the 10 students and once i will increase the price or once i will increase the profitability if i will increase the profit margin what would happen so that if i was earlier in uh, uh, if i was earlier giving a tuition to the 10 students once i will increase the price the students will decrease and it might come to three students or two students are you getting a point yes. so if the company is increasing the net profit margin so there is a side effect that your asset turnover would reduce so it means the net profit margin and the asset turnover is having an inverse relation okay they are having inverse relation inverse relation now let me give you a wonderful insight for a luxurious for luxurious good always remember always remember asset turnover would be lower asset turnover would be lower lower but there will be there would be a high profit margin okay so to increase profit if net profit margin is being increased normally the asset turnover will be lower yes it seems and, that and you will be you will be visualizing this one in your questions that whenever you see that the net profit margin is increasing you will observe that the, there will be a little bit downward towards the asset turnover so you can link it you can link it for example if you if you just see the scenario and you saw that the net uh, the asset turnover is decreased as compared to the last year now what you have to do you just move on towards the net profit margin so what is the situation over here you will see that if the asset turnover is reducing you will demonstrate this one that there will be a higher net profit margin so you can connect here that the asset turnover is reducing we cannot say that the company's performance is being worse down we cannot say that the company is performing uh, uh, in a, or the company's performance in the bad position we cannot say that because the one reason which we could identify is that the net profit margin has been increased and it's natural whenever you will increase the net profit margin there will be a decrease in the asset turnover are you getting a point 
Yes. And one more thing that you comment on this point. That if there is a luxurious good, so there will be a low asset turnover and a high net profit margin. Like, let me give an example for this one. Have you heard about Harley Davidson? Yes. What is this? Motorcycle. Yes. I think you liked it, huh? No. <laughs> I thought that you are having a mouth watering. Uh, mouth. No. Okay. So Harley Davidson. Uh, is this the very cheapest bike? No. Expensive one, one of the it's one of the most expensive bike uh, here in Pakistan. I just see one or two bikes on road. Mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of bike because it's one of the most expensive bike, uh, and definitely it's expensive one. So it's not uh, feasible for everyone to buy that particular bike. So Harley Davidson is one of the most expensive bike, and there are some scooty. Have you heard about scooties? Yes. Do you drive? Um, not but the cycle, but go. Okay, but car. Okay, so Scooty, is it the expensive or relatively a cheaper one? Cheaper one. Yes, it's cheaper. It means there is a low selling price or there is a lower profit margin. For example, if a business is selling a Scooty and if there's another business, if there's another shop and is selling the Harley Davidson, what do you think that uh, on an average, if the person who is selling the Scooty will be able to sell 100 Scooties in a year? Yes. Easily. It's easy for him, is it? Mm -hmm. But can you see that the Harley Davidson supplier will also be selling 100 to 200 Harley Davidson in a year? No. No. Why? Because they are having a high profit margin. That is the luxurious good. That is a luxurious good. They are having a high profit margin. And remember, if you are having a high profit margin, so there will be a lower asset turnover. Are you getting a point? Yes. And vice versa. And vice versa. If you are having if you are having a low profit margin, then you will be having a high asset turnover. So the net profit margin will be lower. So the net profit margin would be lower. Uh, there could be another because in Scooty they will be having a very low profit margin. They are having a very low profit margin. They do not earn a lot of money in that particular one. But yes, here in bikes they have a very good profit margin because if they are selling ten to fifteen bikes in a year, that's that's quite enough for them. Reason being, they have retained a high profit margin, and if they are selling fifteen products in a year, it's completely fine for them. But for them, if they are selling hundred units. That would be lower for them. For example, they would say that if we sell 120 units, then we'll be having a good profit. So it means if you are selling some luxury goods and if your business relates to the luxurious goods, so remember this will be a normal situation that there will be a high profit margin and there will be a low asset turnover. Are you getting a point? Yes. Let me yes. just read the points over here. I just written, I have just written over there read the points and if any point is not clear to you please let me know one more important point that is written over here that increase in the asset turnover. For example, you are selling more products. You are selling a lot of products. You are selling products in a bulk quantity. So increase in the asset turnover might indicate that the focusing more on the sales volume at a low profit margin. And one more thing, one more thing that uh, that suddenly comes to my mind. That is, you might be offering a discounts to your customers. Okay. Are you getting this point? Yes. And if you're giving if you're giving a trade discount, do you remember the trade discount? Yes. The discount which is given on the bulk quantities. So this could be a very good point. For example, if the company's position is that uh, the uh, asset turnover is increasing, so you can say that the company might be offering a trade discount because of which there's a huge sales and company is focusing more on the sales or the volume area. Now, one more thing that possible ways to increase the asset turnover. How can we increase the asset turnover? 
by reducing the selling price obviously once you will reduce the selling price the profit margin would decrease and there will be increase in the asset turnover am i right yes second point aggressive marketing and the third one is the yes there's a point discounts on bulk purchases is it clear to you yes okay now we are moving towards the last ratio of the performance we are moving on towards the last ratio of performance last ratio of performance now that is the return on capital employed uh, the biggest problem is that we cannot comment on the return on capital employed isolately okay what you have to do in your exams that once you will start to comment first of all you need to put the heading performance ratio what you need to put the heading performance, performance and you just start with the ratios like uh if you are good in your english and if you think that you can write a big paragraph so i would recommend you to go for the paragraph side but sometimes at times it's not uh, it's not easy to write the whole paragraph and you just lost in between so you can have bullets so what you will be doing you will be commenting you will be starting from the gross profit margin you will be commenting 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 and then you will change the paragraph and you will start with the net profit margin there is no need to put the headings once you will read the examiner reports or the examiner solution they never put heading they never put the heading that you now you i'm going to comment on the gross profit margin because you will be trapped in this particular issues uh, in that particular standard or the chapter there is a negative side that you cannot comment on the ratios insolately isolately or independently because there is an overlapping if you are commenting on the net profit margin somehow you will be discussing about the asset turnover and if you will be discussing on the asset turnover somehow you will be having a sum of uh, net profit margin discussion in that particular ratio so this would be overlapping so what you will be doing once you will be commenting you will be having a one major heading that is the performance rest you will be writing down the paragraph there is no need to have some headings of net profit margin or the gross profit margin or the asset turnover there is no need to put the headings in your paragraphs are you getting a point yes just change the paragraph if you think that uh, the uh, that the comments on the net profit margin is over change uh, just change the paragraph and start with the return on capital employed or the asset turnover okay now what is the return on capital employed rows to which we call it as rows it's not a rows but it's a rows the formula for this one is the profit before interest and tax divided by capital employed now what is capital employed capital employed is the basically the total financing you have made it out it includes it includes the long term debt am i right yes plus the shareholders equity is it now what first of all first of all the rows the answer of the return on capital employed will be in terms of percentage it okay. will be in terms of percentage and the second important point is higher is favorable higher is favorable favorable and the third important point is what does it indicates what does it indicates so the return on capital employed indicates that how much amount of profit is being earned how much percentage of profit retained by the company retained by company by using the total financing by using the total financing how much percentage of profit retained by the company by using the total financing that is known as what return on capital employed for example for example uh i had a profit of 500000 i had a profit of 500000 that i earned a profit of 500000 and i injected a total financing of 5 million so what and multiply by 100 so what would be the result for this one right Sign, sign. There is no sign. Then, yes, it's ten percent. It's a ten percent. 
which means which means uh, what you have done that you employed or you have invested 5 million and out of which you are collecting or you are earning a profit of 5 lakh which means you are earning 10% profit you are earning a profit of 10% and i told you earlier that in order to increase the profit we have two ratios we have two things that we need to do that is you can increase the net profit margin or the other thing is that you can increase the asset turnover am i right there are only two possible ways through which you can improve the return on capital employed. Number one, either you increase the net profit margin or you increase the asset turnover. It is also said that it is also said that return on capital employed is basically a product of net profit margin and the asset turnover. How? Net profit. The formula for the net profit margin is PBIT divided by sales. Yes. And the formula for the asset turnover is uh, sales, sales divided by capital over, employed. Yes, PBIT over capital employed. Yes, PBIT, sorry, PBIT divided by? No, when you now, cross the what, sales, yes, you will get PBIT yes, over yes, you, once you once, once there will be a cross multiplication, now the net resultant would be PBIT divided by capital employed. So that is the formula for the rules. So return on capital employed is basically a product of the net profit margin and the asset turnover. So once we'll be commenting on the return on capital employed, we need to consider, we need to account for the net profit as well as the asset turnover. Yes. One thing, one additional comment that you can make it out. Uh, in that capital employed, we have two things. That is long-term debt and the shareholder equity. Yes. If there is an increase in numerator, if there is an increase in numerator, there will be an increase in ratio. Yes. If there is a increase in denominator, there will be a decrease in the ratio. And what if what if there is an increase in denominator, which means if the denominator is increasing and we have two things in the denominator long-term debt long -term and the shareholder equity. equity long term debt and the sh for example if the return on capital employed is lower than the previous year for example last year the return on capital employed was 20 percent and now it's 15 percent you can't say that the company is performing worst you can't say that the company's profitability has been declined and company's performance is not that up to the mark it's not good for the organization no you can't say that one you need to evaluate the situation there is a possibility that company might have borrowed a loan amount to expand their operations. Are you getting my point? Yes. To expand their operations. Now, what would happen? If you have borrowed the loan amount, it means uh, long-term debt would increase? Yes. And if the long-term debt would increase, it means the denominator will increase, will increase. and ratio automatically will the ratio would decrease. Are you getting a point? Yes. So it means what I told you that whenever you are trapped and you're not able to think and you're not able to comment or you're not able to analyze what is the last, what is the last lender that you need to evaluate the formula that if I want to improve this ratio, what else i can do so for that one you need to observe two things number one that is if i want to increase the return on capital employed so increase in numerator either you increase in numerator or you decrease in denominator yeah. are you getting a point yes so it means if you have taken the long term that automatically the capital employed would increase and the ratio would decrease there yes. could be another option for example company shifted towards a revaluation model because of which company recognized a uh, company recognizes a revaluation surplus company recognizes a revaluation surplus now what would happen if you are recognizing a revaluation surplus revaluation surplus would increase shareholder would increase capital employed would increase and the ratio, the ratio would decrease so it means if the ratio of the return on capital employed is decreasing, you can comment on the long term debt, you can comment on the revaluation surplus, and the most favorite, you can comment on the net profit margin and the asset turnover. Are you getting a point? Yes. 
do read the comments of it. One more thing, one more thing. That is was one, one, a very important point is given over here. Return on capital employed may be compared with the previous year rose or the borrowing cost. Borrowing cost means interest expense, interest rate, interest rate. For example, uh, if in your economy your interest rate is fifteen percent, bank is offering you a fifteen percent interest rate, and your return on capital employed is return on capital employed is let's say 20 percent if the company is in good condition is in the good shape or the bad shape tell me again in your economy the banks are offering an interest rate of 15 percent but your company's gross return on capital employed is uh, 20 percent whether the company is in the good condition or the bad condition bad why it is higher it's no, good it's, yes it's good that bank if you will invest that amount into the bank you will be getting only 15 percent but right now you are operating a business and you are earning a 20 percent are you getting a point yes but for instance if i just make a situation reverse and i would say that the bank is offering you an interest rate of interest rate of 15 percent and you are earning a return on capital employed of 10 percent now whether the condition is favorable or unfavorable favorable sorry favorable why favorable because it has been increased now, just look at this independently your interest rate bank is offering an interest rate of 15 percent and you are earning a return on capital of 10 percent whether the situation is good for the organization unfavorable. unfavorable why because you're wasting your time by contributing into the business you are earning just 10 percent why are you contributing towards the business let's invest into the bank you just invest in the bank and earn a profit of 15 percent yes are you getting a point yeah so this is something that you can comment that you can comment the return on capital employed with the borrowing cost or the interest rate is it clear to you yes so these were the performance ratios and uh, uh, if i would say it would not be wrong that in 80 percent of the cases in 80 percent of the scenarios examiner usually test these performance ratios and for the 20 percent scenarios examiner would be testing the position ratios and in no scenario the examiner would be testing the investor issues okay now let's move on to the position ratios now what does it represents position ratios first of all first position ratio is the current ratio do you know something about the current ratio many of the time it's a favorite ratio for the students quick current inventory receivable payable receivable payable it's good okay uh, current ratio first of all uh, the answer of this current ratio will be in a proportion it should be in a proportion, proportion like 1 is to 5 is to 1 like 1 is to 1 like 2 is to 1 are you getting a point Yes. it will not be in a percentage it will not be in times the answer would be in the form of proportion second thing is higher is favorable higher is uh, yes for the performance ratios hmm. all the performance ratios it should be higher to be favorable right uh yes absolutely okay. you can learn it by this thing yes you can if you want to memorize it you can definitely learn in that way okay okay now current ratio the higher is favorable now what the current ratio what i told you that whenever you start to begin with the interpretation first of all uh what you will be saying you will be first of all uh, giving the explanation that what ratio is now what ratio is what the current ratio is current ratio shows you that uh how much amount of how much 
amount of current asset how much amount of current asset is available is available to settle the current or short term obligation are you getting a point yes okay how much amount of current asset is available how much amount of current asset how much amount of current asset is available how much amount of current asset is available to settle the current or the short term obligation this ratio indicates that for example if i am having an asset of 20000 and a liability of 10000 so it means the answer would be 2 is 21 what it shows that in order to pay off the 1 rupee liability in order to pay a 1 rupee or 1 dollar dollar liability i have 2 dollar resources available are you getting a point oh okay yes in order to pay a 1 rupee dollar or 1 rupee liability i do have 2 rupee assets available so is it the good condition or the worst or the bad condition good very good for example if i've just calculated and the ratio is 3 is to 1 what does it interprets interprets that in order to pay off one liability we have how many assets three assets okay is it the good condition or the bad condition good if i will say that i am having a ratio of 4 is to 1 uh, that is in order to pay a one rupee liability i do have how many assets four is it the good condition or the bad condition good no but i would say the company is moving on towards the bad condition side why why remember what are you taking on the on the numerator side numerator side we have yeah, current asset and uh, if you just see that ratio is increasing why because of the increase in numerator am i right yes it means if the numerator is increasing for example it was 20000 divided by 10000 for example yes. here in that situation it's 30000 divided by 10000 yes or since in that particular case it's 40, 40 it means it means your numerator is increasing which means your current asset is increasing and please evaluate what do we have in the current assets we in have inventory. cash accounts receivable inventory am i right yes mainly these three items mainly these three items are included in the current asset and don't you think these items are highly risky items that if your current asset is increasing what are you doing you are holding a cash you are holding it and this will be of no use why you are holding the cash just go and invest that particular cash it means if your current asset is increasing every year or every month it's not a good condition it's not a very favorable condition so which means now you have to be very alert that yes the higher is favorable but with certain limit and the limit is that is 1.5 is to 1 are you getting a point if it is 2 is to 1 if it is 2 is to 1 let's make it acceptable but if it is increasing from 2 it would not be a very good condition for the organization are you getting a point okay why because i just told you that, that there are different assets like cash it's a very liquid, it's a very uh, risky item we know that yes. by the passage of time your cash would be devalued yes second is account receivable your current assets are increasing there's a possibility your account receivable balance is increasing and if your account receivable balance is increasing it means you are having a less recovery and if you are having a less recovery there is a possible chance of what bad debt yes you will be losing your account receivable because if your receivable is increasing no doubt the current assets are increasing and if the current assets are increasing which means the current ratio is improving but it's not on the improving side so it means whenever you comment on the current ratio what you have to do what you have to do just look at the balance sheet and try to evaluate 
whether the current ratio is increasing is there any other aspect for example the account receivable has been increased from the last year or the cash balance has been increased from the last year or inventory the most dangerous item there is a chance of obsolescence yes your They're inventory could, too much. yes that this could have been obsolete there is a possibility that after some time you have to record that inventory at the lower of cost or nrv there is a possibility that you will be recognizing that inventory at the lower nrv are you getting a point okay. yes so these are the points that you can make on the current ratio so you can just read the comments on this one one more thing that on the ratios on that particular ratio that is in the current ratio we have two things that the numerator and the denominator is it if you just look at the denominator current liabilities for example what i said that if you are increasing the uh, numerator the ratio would increase hello is it hello hello can you hear me yes if there would be increase in the ratio if there would be increase in numerator there will be increase in ratio and if there is an increase in denominator there will be a decrease in ratio oh, is it yes so it means you can also comment that why the current ratio is decreasing for example last year to the current year the ratio has been decreased now there are two possibilities there are two possibilities whether the assets have been reduced or whether the liabilities have been increased are you getting a point yes so it means increase in denominator increase in denominator will reduce the ratio yes so there is a possibility there, there is a possibility the company might have taken an overdraft facility okay. yes are you getting a point yes and this will have a consequences that what are the consequences of the lower current ratio if the company is having a lower current ratio now what could be a negative side for this one uh, company will face uh, if the long term debt is due company will face the problem if the long term debts are due company might have availed the overdraft facility higher interest expenses definitely your borrowings your uh, your current liabilities are more than your current assets which means you will be paying the interest expenses and lower current ratio creates issues for the bills payment and the suppliers which means operational payments operational payments will be disturbed are you getting a point like electricity utility bills your like salaries wages all of these problems will arise is it clear to you yes now current ratio what is sorry quick ratio uh, quick ratio is basically the most liquidable ratio and uh, in the current ratio we saw that uh, the ratio would be in terms of proportion same goes here the answer would be in terms of proportion and the second thing is second thing is again higher is favorable yes higher is favorable now quick ratio what does it what does it stands for what does it stands for that is quick ratio that uh, while we were calculating the current ratio uh, current ratio for example the current ratio was 2 is to 1 we said that mm -hmm. it's good it's an ideal one it's an ideal one and uh, we are going to calculate the quick ratio why because in that current ratio we are using the assets and there are few assets like current assets which are less liquidable okay 
what do we mean by less liquidable that are not easily yes, convertible time. into cash okay that are not easily convertible into cash, cash. like what are those what are those that is the inventory inventory are you getting a point mm -hmm. like inventory inventory or we can say that the prepaid these two are the less liquidable items less liquidable items means they are the current asset they fall under the head of current assets but they are not easily convertible into cash these are not easily convertible into cash so what we are doing what we'll be doing for in order to calculate the more liquidable ratio that is a quick ratio we will be eliminating the inventory and prepaid from the current assets we will be reducing the inventory and prepaid from the current assets are you getting a point yes and then divided by the current liabilities for example you calculated the current ratio 2.1 and you just arrived that the quick ratio is let's say uh, 0 0.8 is to 1 today yes we need to less prepaid also yes uh, I know that uh, earlier you must have studied about the inventory, but in the updated course now the prepaid will also be deducted. Okay. It's Are you new? getting a point? It's new. Yes, it's new. Okay. And it's logical as well. It's logical as well. Why? Because what because is prepaid? prepaid? We have already paid. You cannot convert into the cash. Yes. If we are calculating the liquidity ratios, you want to see the liquidity of the organization. So it's not possible to convert into cash. Are you getting a point? Yes. So what we'll be doing that we will be having a quick ratio of 0 0.8 is to 1. Now what it indicates, uh, it seems like current ratio is good and quick ratio is also good, right? Yes. But it's not the case. There is an alarming situation. Do you know what that? current ratio falls from 2 till 0 0.8 it means there is a decline of there is a decline of 1.2 am i right 0 0.2 yes yes it's 1.2 is it yes which shows that your current ratio is declined by more than 50 percent okay what does it mean? It means you were relying more on these two assets. And these are the most dangerous, especially this inventory one. If the company is holding more inventory with them, it's a very dangerous situation because that inventory could be obsolete. I'll get to my point. Yes. So it means whenever you are comparing the current ratio with the quick ratio, so you need to consider whether, whether there is a difference between the current and the quick ratio is higher or lesser. If there is a very small difference between the current ratio and the quick ratio, then it is perfectly fine. For example, for the current ratio, it was 2 is to 1. And now you calculated the quick ratio and it is 1.2 is to 1. Then it's fine. Then it's fine. But if you think that, for example, the current ratio was 2 is to 1 and the quick ratio is 0 0.6 is to 1, it means it's a very alarming situation that company is relying more on the inventory side or the prepaid side. If it is more than 50%, it is alarming. Yes. Are you getting a point? Yes. You can read but the comments. If it is less than, than 50%, it is okay. It's okay. It's perfectly fine. Higher quick ratio might indicate the following that if the quick ratio is still increasing, for example, it's one, it's 1.1, it's 1.2, it means there's a high quick ratio or there is a high uh, quick ratio. Then, uh, what could be consequences for this one? That company is collect having a collection in the account receivable and that may lead to bad debt. Are you getting my point? Yes. Tangible assets or investment disposed of during the year. Yes, there is a possibility that company might have disposed of the tangible assets during the year. If the company has disposed of the tangible assets, what would happen? You will receive the cash. Am I right? Yes. And if you will receive the cash, there will be an increase in the current. There will be an increase in the current asset. 
Yes. And if there will be increase in the current asset, obviously the quick and the current ratio both would increase. Are you getting a point? Yes. So it means if you are having a high quick ratio, there is a possibility that your account receivable increasing. If you are having a high quick ratio, there is a possibility that you must have disposed some investment or the non-current asset, or you might have some share transaction because of which you will again receive the cash. Am I right? Yes. And there is another possibility that you have borrowed the long-term debt. So these are the points that you need to remember. Exam. Whenever the examiner yeah. would be testing. Whenever the examiner would be testing with you ratios or the interpretation, always remember you uh, there will be a certain situation and you need to target either of the situation in that particular scenario. Now, what is written over here in the last comment that is lower quick ratio may indicate the falling problem that the problem in the short term liabilities, although this will not create problem if the company have overdraft facility. It means if you are having a lower quick ratio, definitely it will be a problem for the organization to pay off their short term debts. Now there's a term with the over trading. What does it mean? You can use that concept of over trading in the current ratio and the quick ratio. What is over trading? That you are uh, having a trading aggressively. For example, you are selling goods to the customers on credit. You are selling more goods to the customer on credit. More goods to the customers on credit. You are selling more goods. Selling more goods to the customers on credit. And, and you are purchasing, purchasing goods from supplier on credit on credit it means you are selling the goods on credit to the customers and you are purchasing from the supplier and you are playing very aggressively that aggressive trading is known as what the over trading there is a side effect of it there is a consequences of it if you're selling more goods to the customer on credit definitely the customer will pay after the period of two months or the three months and if you are purchasing from the supplier definitely you have to pay your supplier at any cost you have to pay the operational cost you have to pay the salaries to the staff you have to pay the electricity cost you have to pay the utility utility bills so it means if you're selling uh, and you are aggressively selling the goods and selling the goods at a very very excessive credit period you are targeting to the customers that i want to sell the goods i want to sell the goods and you are selling the goods in a very excessive period excessive credit period then this situation is known as what the over trading and it's a negative situation okay this is not considered as a very good strategy because if you will be if you will not be recovering anything from the customer definitely there are the expenses on the background for example you have to pay salaries to the staff wages to the staff electricity advertisement rent these all are expenses that you need to pay you need to pay to your suppliers as well and you're recovering nothing from the customers so that is known as what the over trading for example if the company's current ratio is increasing current ratio has been increased and it increased with a massive amount you will not be inspired with this particular situation you have to comment it out that there could be a possibility that company is focusing more on the over trading side reason being that company is purchasing more inventory is it yes if there is a more inventory, it means there is a more current asset. Company is selling the goods on credit. It means there is more account receivable, which yeah. means there is more current asset. And if you are having a higher current assets, obviously your current and the quick ratio would increase. Are you getting a point? Yes. You can just read that paragraph.
Are you done with this one? Yes. Okay, now let's move on towards the next ratio that is the account receivable turnover ratio, or we can say that the account receivable days ratio. Uh, account receivable turnover ratio. If you talk about the account receivable turnover ratio, this will always be in terms of times. And account receivable days ratio will have an answer in terms of days. Please. Now, turnover ratio indicates that how many times, what I said, how many times the company sells goods to their customers, to their, to their customers. Yes to their customers. For example, if I would say the company sells goods uh, or sorry, account receivable turnover. Sorry, my bad. How many good? times the uh, how many times the company is recovering or receiving the amount from the customers? How many times? how many times company receives payment from their customers payment from their customers how many times the company receives payment from their customers what does it mean for example if i would say that company customer one of the customer pays me around four times in a year one of the customer pays me four times in a year or now in the subsequent years it's six times and in the very third year it's 15 times it means company com, customer pays me 15 times in a year so which situation is good situation number one two or the three Which situation is favorable? In situation one, it is said that company is receiving from their customers four times in a year. That means the customer is paying me the amount, my balance outstanding amount, four times in a year. In a situation two, it states that the customer is paying me six times in a year. And in the situation three, it states that company or the customer is paying me 15 times in a year. Which situation is better? Free? Yes. Sorry. Situation three. Yes. Why? Because the more you will receive the amount, it's good for the organization. The higher for example, is favorable. Yes. It means the higher turnover, higher is favorable. For turnover, higher is favorable. But for example, in days in days what it says that it says that this ratio says that that in how many days you receive the amount how many days you receive the amount in how many days for example if i would say that average receivable is collected in 50 days average receivable is collected in 50 days in days 50 days 50 and uh, subsequently there's another company that it says that we receive amount in 40 days and there's another company this says that we receive an amount in 20 days which company is better one two or 20, three? three yes which means in that particular situation lower is favorable am i right yes in case of the days lower is favorable Okay. Now, how can you improve the ratio? How can you improve the ratio? How can you improve the ratio that if you want to, uh, and remember, examiner usually asks for the, uh, if I would say that for which area the examiner would be asking, so examiner would be giving you uh, a calculation for account receivable days. Examiner would be giving you a calculation for the accounts receivable days. So you'll be having uh, comments on that particular account receivable days. So how an account receivable days can be, how an account receivable days can be improved. The first and the basic 
tool is that you offer the discount to your customers. Okay. Have you heard about the cash discount? Yes. So just offer cash discount to your customer and the customer will pay you early as possible so that you can have uh, you can reduce the account receivable days. Okay. Okay now lower uh, if you can see that the comment that is given over here that lower account receivable turnover and higher days may be cause of for example if you are having higher days and uh, the customer is paying very slowly so there could be a policy to attract more trade and the customers there's a yes. possibility that you are attracting more customers customer might be in financial difficulties therefore they are not able to pay and might have some dispute over invoices to improve company might offer early payment cash discount are you getting my point yes Another issue is the inventory turnover ratio or inventory days. Again, same situation would be for that one. For inventory turnover, higher is favorable. And for days, it is lower is favorable. Now, what does it indicate? Turnover indicates that how many times, how many times in a year, We usually. Um, Junaid, one minute. For yes. the account receivables, these, the formula is the same. No, the formula would be reciprocal. Okay. Account receivable will be debited, and the credit sales revenue will be credited multiplied by three sixty five. Good that okay. you have asked it. Multiply by three sixty five. So it will be trade receivable over credit sales times three six yes, five. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Same goes for the inventory days. The formula would be reversed. Multiply by three sixty five. Okay. Now, what does the turnover interpret? That how many times in a year we usually complete the inventory cycle? Complete the inventory cycle. How many times in a year we usually complete the inventory cycle? Now, what is the inventory cycle? What we do that we buy raw material from the supplier. From a supplier, we bought a raw material. We yes. put it in the working process, WIP. Yes. And then we keep it in the warehouse as a finished goods. Yes. And then we sell it to the customer. Is it? Mm hmm Now from supplier till the sale of that customer this is basically known as the inventory cycle this is known as what the inventory cycle for example we bought raw material from the supplier we put it in the working process we completed the goods and we sold it to the customer it means that inventory cycle is completed number one one time it is completed again we bought the raw material we put it in the working process and we just completed the finished goods and we sold it now this is the two times we have completed that inventory cycle. Again, we run, we run the same process, and that is three times we completed that process. Are you getting a point? So yes. In times state that, and how many times in a year you complete this particular process? So whether the higher is favorable or the lower is favorable? Higher. Yes. If the company says that we complete that process 30 times in a year, good. A company says that we complete that process 100 times in a year. That's amazing. Are you getting my point? Yes. And what does it days stands for? Days stands for, or what that is, it, it, it interprets. It interprets that in how many days, in how many days, Inventory cycle is completed. And the formula? Inventory cycle. And the formula would be inventory debit? Uh, for the first one, cost of goods sold over inventory. The inventory is closing, right? Yes, inventory is closing. It's an ending okay. inventory. And this one? 
This is also an inventing inventory. It's not average inventory of a cost of sales. Uh, no reason. Uh, most of the time we are using the ending inventory. Examiner will never give you the average inventory because for that average inventory, the uh, examiner would have to give the data for the three years. Oh, okay. So it will always give you an ending inventory because you have to calculate the ratios for two years, for which means. If you want a data of, or if you want to calculate the average inventory, so you need the data for the four years so that you can calculate the average inventory. Yes. Okay. So examiner would definitely give you the ending inventory, and we'll be calculating or using that ending inventory or the closing inventory. Okay. In how many days the inventory cycle is being completed? For example, that is the inventory cycle. I said that I just bought the raw material, put it on the working process, completed the finished goods, and sold it to the customer, and this took around ten days. Okay. Now let me know whether higher is favorable or the lower is favorable. Lower. Yes, complete that inventory cycle as soon as possible so that you can re recover the amount from your customers. Are you getting a point? Yes. Now you just read out the points for this one. That if the inventory turnover is getting uh, higher, for inventory days is getting higher. For example, if the inventory days is getting higher, for let's say last year it was 10 years, 10 days, now it's 15 days, now 35 days, and now 50 days, which means if your inventory days are increasing, it's a negative sign. It's a negative sign because yes. there is a possibility that your inventory is not being sold out just because of the slowdown in the trading. Okay. There is another. There is another reason that you are buying inventory in bulk quantity. Yes, this is a positive sign. This is the positive side. This is the positive point that if your inventory days are increasing or if the inventory turnover is decreasing, inventory turnover is decreasing, which means that you have bought the raw material in bulk quantity. Why okay. to avail the discounts? Mm -hmm. You have you 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 bought you bought an inventory level. You increase in inventory level because raw material prices will rise. You're not paying to the supplier because the supply is unreliable and there is an increase in the cost of storage. That is the negative point. Okay. Most of the time, companies are purchasing more inventory, more inventory or the more raw material just because that the company wants to avoid the stock out condition. What is a stock out? Stock out means you have orders, you have demand. But you don't have product to sell. No stock. Yes, no product is available. Okay. Are you getting a point? Now that is the account people turnover. Uh, accounts people turnover again. That is the ratio for the accounts people. That is the calculation. And if we are going to calculate the days, definitely we are going to uh, reverse that formula. Multiply by 365. Account people turn over. Higher is favorable, lower is favorable. Lower is favorable. Yes, here it is reverse situation. And in days it would be higher. Yes. What the analysis says that you try to hold the money. You try to hold the money as much as possible. Don't pay your suppliers at the earliest. Why? Just keep you keep the money with you and try to invest in some business and take out some profit or the interest. So it means here the situation would be reversed. That if the turnover, if you talk about the turnover, then the if you talk about the turnover, what would be the situation? The lower is favorable, which means that if you're paying regularly to your supplier, you're not doing a charity. You're not doing and you're not running an NGO that you're paying to your supplier very frequently. Don't pay to your supplier frequently. So it means it should be lower in. And payable days. I pay, for example, if I say that I pay to my supplier very early. I if I if I say that I pay to my supplier in 15 days, although the credit period is 30 days, I'll be a fool person. I will be a foolish person. I will be an idiot for this one. If the company or the suppliers allowed me a credit of 30 days and I'm paying that debt in 10 days, so I'll be a foolish person. Why I'm paying that debt in 10 days? 
there's no need to pay early if the supplier has already allowed you a credit term of 30 days but remember don't drag it a lot for example the credit period was 30 days and you said that i will pay 90 days what will happen the supplier will never give you a credit again are you getting my point yes for example uh, if the company is having a 30 days account payable days and uh, now in this year it's being 35 or 38 days it's good or bad last year yeah. the company company paid the debt in 30 days and this year the company paid the debt in 38 days is it the good or bad good yes it seems good that company delayed the payment it it seems good that the company delayed the payment but there could be a negative side that company is delaying payment because the company is not having a sufficient amount of money to pay the debt no sufficient money to pay the debt are you getting a point yes so it means if you're delaying no doubt it could be a strategy but there could be another thing another picture of the story that you don't have money to pay the debt so it means you are not delaying involuntarily but you are trapped because of which you are not able to pay are you getting a point yes now these are the points are very important that uh, higher days if you are having a higher days may cause a disadvantage that would create a poor reputation existing supplier may discontinue continue and company might be losing early payment discount very important point that it is possible that the company might not be availing the cash discount because they are paying delay they are having a late payments definitely they will not be availing the cash discounts are you clear in this one yes now one thing that examiner might ask you that to calculate the working capital days working capital days that for how many days your amount was tied up so in order to calculate the working capital capital days there is a simple formula that you will take account receivable days plus inventory days less payable days yes and less accounts payable days are you getting a point yes yes now if you want to increase the working capital days for example examiner asks you that what a strategy should be adopted to increase the working capital days so there are three options either to increase the account receivable days yes or decrease inventory yes so it means uh, decrease the account receivable days decrease the inventory days and increase, increase the payable days, days. So by this you will be able to improve your by this you will be able to improve your working capital days. Okay. Are you getting a point? Yeah. Now these are uh, that is also the ratio that is also the position ratios, but specifically we also call it as liquidity ratios. Sorry, okay. solvency ratios. Not liquidity one. Solvency. Yes. It is also known as what the solvency ratios. It now, is still what, found in the balance sheet. Yes, it is also the part of your balance sheet. Just see the just, just see the components of it. You will find yes. all the components from the balance sheet. So that is known as the solvency ratios. That is known as what the solvency ratios as well. Now, what is it? It interprets that is a gearing ratio gearing ratio the formula of the gearing ratio itself an interpretation that it the formula is long term debt divided by shareholders equity plus long term debt total long term debt multiply by 100 this will give you a result in terms of percentage and what does it interpret interprets uh, interprets uh, that that how much amount of long term debt do you have how much long term debt do you have how much debt financing basically how much debt financing do you have out of the total financing it means 
out of the total financing how much percentage of de uh, debt financing do we have for example if i borrowed uh, 500000 from the bank that is a long term debt and uh, i do have a shareholder equity of 1 million and a long term debt of 5 lakh is it yes so it means 5 lakh divided by 15 lakh multiply by 100 can you please solve it Thirty-three percent. It means thirty-three percent. You have you are having a thirty-three percent of your total equity or the total financing, and thirty per thirty-three percent belongs to the debt. Out of the total financing, you have borrowed thirty-three percent from the financial institution, which means remaining remaining that is seventy sixty-seven uh, percent. Seventy-seven. No, sixty-seven. Sixty-seven. It's sixty-seven. Remaining sixty-seven percent is your own money, which means thirty-three percent represents the debt financing, debt financing, and remaining sixty-seven percent represents the equity financing. Am I right? Okay. Now, what do you think? It is the good condition or the bad condition? It's good, right? Yes, it's good. That lower amount of debt, it means. What we say that we say that it's a gearing ratio. That the gearing ratio means that the debt ratio, that how much amount of gearing or how much amount of the debt the company have. So it means that is the 33 percent is the debt financing. That is the gearing ratio, and that 67 percent is the leverage ratio. And leverage is basically the inverse of the gearing. For example, if the gearing ratio is 40 percent, so what would be the leverage ratio? 60. Yes. Sixty. Are you getting a point? Yes. Okay. If the company is having a gearing ratio of more than fifty percent, if the company is having a gearing ratio of more than fifty percent, such companies are known as what highly geared. These are highly geared. These are highly risky companies. These are known as what the highly geared companies. Are you getting my point? Highly, yes. These are known as the highly geared companies. And highly geared companies, high gearing is suitable for whom? Highly geared companies are suitable for whom? For whom the company is having the stable profit? For example, if you are having a 60% gearing ratio, don't forget that you have to pay the interest on those. So for that, you must have stable profits. Company having a suitable assets for security and pledge because if you are having a highly geared, if you are having having a very huge amount of loan, bank will not provide you loan easily. You have to give something in security. You need to something mortgage. Entities not suited to high gearing would include those who are in extractive and high tech industries. Why? Because in high technological industries where you have IT, that is technological products. So these technological products got absolutely obsolete very early. So banks or the financial institutions will never accept these kinds of assets for the mortgage or for pledge purposes. Okay. Are you getting a point? Yes. So these are basically the uh, position ratios. And one more position ratio is that is the, uh, so these were all the position ratios. And now from here, from here onwards, now these are known as what the investor ratios okay are you getting a point it's examinable uh it's not that examinable i haven't seen that uh, uh, that examiner would be asking for the interest cover ratio or the eps or for the price earning ratio for the dividend yield or cover right okay In most important ratios are that is the performance and the position and the gearing one and the gear gearing is also the part of your position ratios yes yes are you getting a point yeah so this was all and uh, i would just recommend you if you just read out the investors ratios it's not that important and do, there's no need to spend time on this one uh, so you uh, it is preferable that you have a very good understanding of the position and the performance ratios is it clear to you yes so that was all from the ratio side and uh, uh, I would recommend you 
uh, that how to cope up with that topic. Uh, if you want a very good understanding of that topic, I would recommend you to solve the past paper question. To solve the Which one? past paper question. Uh, lastly, we, uh, we have discussed that uh, the, that was the June 2023. Yes, there is a question in that gross profit yes. of a rating and OC. Yes, what you will be doing, you will be solving that past paper question. And okay. after solving the past paper question, read the answers. Okay. Reason? Because once you will read the answers, you will get the ideas that what examiner has given. And remember, yes. Once you will be solving, once you will be solving your question or the past paper question, remember your solution that you have made or you have prepared. And please don't solve it verbally. Okay. Type it. Type the comments. Yes. Don't solve it verbally that yes, this could be a situation, this could be no. You have to type it. You have to write down. So okay. once you will compare your solution with the examiner's solution. Always remember, this will never be the same. This will never be the same. There could be a resemblance of only 20 to 30 percent. Okay. Why? Why? Because examiner is one that is highly qualified person. Do yes. you agree with this one? Of course. Of course. Huh? It's highly qualified. Yeah. Second thing is, he is writing the solution in a very relaxed environment. And there's a possibility that you will be researching. Are you getting my point? And all of these three attributes are lacking in a candidate. So yes. never, never judge yourself on the basis of that examiner. You will be reading the examiner solution. Why? Just to get the understanding and the ideas. I told you in a very start that whether the ratio will be increasing or the decreasing there is no third option yes so once you will be reading the examiner solutions you will get the idea okay if the current ratio is increasing examiner has highlighted these two points and these are very good points so what you will do you will just memorize or you will write it down that points in your notebook so that you can use these points in your exams okay are you getting my point yes so first you will try and how are you going to try? First of all, write down the explanation that what actually the ratio is. Second thing is write down whether the increase is favorable or the decrease is favorable. And in the third phase, link the ratio with scenario. Okay. So these should be the target while you are commenting. Once you will once you will target these points so it would be quite easy for you to comment and hopefully inshallah you will be commenting more than a paragraph for every ratio these are the trigger points that will give you a trigger that will give you a trigger to write something are you getting a point yes so please do try the question from the past paper and read the examiner solution so that you have a good understanding of it. Is it clear okay. to you? So this yes. was all from the ratios. And uh, we'll have some other class and we'll have some other topic. Yes. Okay. Any question from your...